If you've experienced issues with your 6 liter Power Strokes oil cooler, stick around because on today's XCP install, Mike is going to show you how to rebuild the oil cooler in your truck to help avoid high temps and oil leaks and get you back on the road with an XDP heavy duty oil cooler. Now that we got the oil cooler here on the bench, I'm gonna show you a couple quick things. One, for some of you guys out there who have trouble getting these EGR hoses off, how to disconnect that, and we're just gonna get the oil pressure switch out and what to check with that. All right, one of the first things I wanna show you here is on the oil pressure switch. You're gonna to wanna to make sure there's no oil inside of here. Uh, if there is, you're obviously gonna to wanna to replace the oil pressure switch, which me personally, I change every time anyway. It's cheap insurance, it's right there, it's right in front of you. Um, now, if you do have oil in, in there, you're going to want to check the connector and the insulation on the wire. Over time, the oil does break that down. Now, the next thing I want to show you is on the EGR cooler hose. Now, I obviously put this back on just to show you how to release it. I know a lot of guys have issues with this. You're going to see on these factory uh, hoses, there's two lines and then a single line. Now, on top of the cooler, on this little cover, there is a notch here or a line. Now you're going to want to rotate this until both of these single lines are lined up and that releases the locking tabs that are inside of here. And it's two little tabs, they ride up this ramp. You'll feel it with your hand once it releases and just pull that right off. Now the other quick thing to take a look for is your drain back valve. You know just make sure it moves freely. Um, you know, you're not missing any parts. It is plastic. Uh, over time, they do fall apart. So just save yourself a headache. Now that we're actually going to start tearing this down, I just want to point out real quick the top of the Torx heads. Um, they do grab a lot of dirt and crud in there. So you're going to want to take a pick and just kind of spin it around, kind of get some of that, that crud out of there. This is just to prevent the Torx bit from stripping out that bolt which obviously make your life a lot harder to remove. I'm gonna grab my T45 Torx bit, my little impact gun here. I'm gonna start with some of these larger bolts. All right, actually before I get too far ahead of myself, Get the oil pressure switch out of here. That to the side. And also on here, I'm going to remove the oil temperature pressure. Switch. Now that's taken care of. Let me switch over to my T30 works bit. Let's start taking out some of these smaller uh, bolts. this cover off. overdue to get changed. All right, pry off the smaller coolant cover. Now, I'm just going to remove these two nuts two bolts on the lower side as well. Let's see. Almost forgot about the 
last cover here. It should get a little bit larger of a pry bar. There we go. All that can get put to the side. We want to grab two two by fours. Put the cover the two by fours so we can actually hit these down. All right, now that we have the cover on top of the 2x4, grab a hammer. Uh, I like just grabbing my 916 socket, or 19 millimeter socket, sorry about that. I'm gonna hold it, put it right on the oil cooler on the, this inner ring right here. Just give it some firm taps. And that's it. Now we have the cover flipped over. As you're gonna see, there's one smaller O-ring, which I'll show you in a second. This is actually one of the larger of those small ones. These two, and this right here is a little threaded insert with an O-ring on it. Typically you find this on later builds, but not always. And here is the other hole. When you go to replace this, this is the smallest one in the XD307 kit. Base gasket along here. Now everything's thrown to the side. And we can go get these parts all cleaned up. All right, now that the parts are out of the parts washer, a couple of things you're going to want to do are clean up gasket surfaces here, you know, lightly. You don't have to polish them, but you do want to get all the, the old gasket material and crud off there. Um, you know, all sides. Make sure the cover's good, no corrosion, nothing uh, that would need replacing on all these surfaces. The other thing to make sure is clear is these weep holes. It's just the one actually. Um, just make sure that's clear and all these pockets are nice and clean. Now that I finished up sanding everything, you wanna take a, a blow gun and lightly blow everything out. You don't want any contamination to affect your new cooler. All right, I'll grab the new cooler, set it here start setting up the o-rings on here just gently stretches over that I find it easier to get the top one on first so the lower one doesn't get stuck in that groove so there we go cooler has its o-rings take the top cover lay these in here just want to push it into the groove if you get one that's a little stubborn it doesn't seem to hold you can put a light dab of grease on the back side help hold it in place base gasket in. And you could do this later on too if you choose. Now once that is in there I like taking the backside like a pick or something help kind of push down. Obviously you can use a screwdriver handle or something of that nature. Just no sharp edges obviously. You don't want to cut the o-ring. Now we got three o-rings plus the one for the insert. So I'm gonna take a little bit of grease here. A little extra insurance make sure these o-rings don't fall out when you're installing the cooler to the housing don't worry about any of the excess grease that's kind of on the cover it's not going to hurt anything so 
right now, actually, this one. Now, the two smaller ones, you're going to want to grab the larger of the two and put right here into the housing. Now, grab the last small one, put it on the insert. Carefully, if you need to, you can use a pick on the back side just to help stretch it out a little bit to get it over that shoulder. Make sure the old ring's not rolled. It looks good. Just a little bit of grease. And there you go, that pump right in there. Okay, now that the cover's ready, we'll slide these over. Put a little bit of grease on these O-rings. These are thicker. It's just going to take a little bit of effort to get these to push in. Um, sometimes, if you're lucky, they kind of go in very smooth. Same thing, don't worry about any of this little bit of excess grease all over the place. It's not gonna hurt nothing. Now we're ready to put this together, but I like to just double check, make sure everything's there. I have my three O-rings, my O-ring on the insert. Insert is fully seated. My holes are clean. Base gasket, if you chose to put it on now, all ready to go. There we go. That's fully seated. Now what I'm gonna do is take our smaller cover here that goes towards the EGR cooler. Slide that on. Okay. Put the nuts on. What I like to do is just lightly slug, snug those back to the top. Now I'll snug these two up. I can switch over to my other setup. Use the my three inch extension here. My 13 millimeter socket. Start tightening these down. As you see, I'll go kind of back and forth between the two just to make sure everything's settling in, not loosening up. Those to stay nice and tight. And same with the top. Perfect. So now those are all good. Now the other top cover. Make sure all the O-rings are staying in place. Turn it around. Make sure nothing's falling down. And just slightly put that on there. Just a little bit larger T45 head bolts. Put those in there. I'll grab a little smaller screws. Put them in as well. That's it. These two. This is for the last cover. Put the last O-ring in place there. And now just lay that right on 
top. Put these two in. Now, there's no real torque sequence for this, um, but you're going to want to bring them all down lightly and kind of still run that crisscross pattern best you can. And me personally, I start with the larger bolts first. Once these are all ran down. And as you can see too, I tend to use my ratchet to bring these all down instead of my gun. I much prefer, much more prefer doing it this way versus using the gun just so I could feel any rough spots, any binding, anything silly. You are just going into aluminum. The last thing you want to do is after you cleaned and prepped everything, is strip out your new housing, or your freshly cleaned housing. Down. I'm going to switch over to my mid-size mid -size 3 8 ratchet and start bringing down the T45 heavy bolts. Going back over, everything feels good, nice and tight. Now, obviously, you would put your oil pressure switch back here. I'm going to be putting another one on, and your oil temperature sensor. Uh, I obviously took this out prior because I was putting all these parts in a parts washer. If you're not using that and you're just going to scrub it with a wire brush, a little brake clean, you don't actually have to remove this. I'll leave that loose. Being, and just put the oil filter base o-ring and that's it you have your screen and that's a six liter oil cooler rebuild now that you know how to rebuild your six liters oil cooler head on over to xdp.com to get an xdp heavy duty oil cooler and gasket kit for your truck today we'll see you next time